Let's talk about the migrant business. Today, uh, we've got the front page of the Daily Express, why the UK's £480 million deal to stop the boats is doomed. And there's a picture of some off-duty French police officers having a nice time at the Be Happy Bar in Calais. Uh, there's no queuing there. Uh, they're getting stuck into the Armagnac, I think, um, and saying to uh, the Daily Express investigations team, well, of course we're not going to stop them coming uh, because we feel sorry for them. Well, I think the extraordinary thing here is that um, we sort of delude ourselves that Fren the French are our allies and mm. that if we pay them 480 million quid, which is appears to be the bill, that they will actually stop the migrants coming. Uh, well, if you just pay them 480 million pounds with no success uh, uh, bonus uh, or indeed no no link to mm. success, then I think, you know, the French are going to continue to laugh at us. I, 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 they've never liked the Anglo-Saxon. Uh, they've always been uh, very envious of us because I think very often we are more able than them. We are, we've had a freer society than them. We haven't had the code Napoleon to hold us back. Um, but I would firstly, uh, I would implement a success formula, which meant that the less migrants that arrived in the UK, uh, the more we would pay the French. And the more migrants that arrive in the UK, which at the moment is a huge number, uh, the less I would pay the French. So until we actually start to get some proper capitalist formula into it, I think the French will continue to laugh at us and um, basically wave them through. Yeah, exactly. Also, politically speaking, there's nothing in it for French officials, either in the local pop, uh, towns of northern France or indeed in the Elysee Palace for President Macron. There's nothing in it for them to make it look as if they're trying to stop them leaving. There's everything in it for them to make it look as if they're encouraging them to go. Absolutely, Mike. Well, I, I do admire the French. I mean, they are nationalists. They do love their country and they do everything to protect France above above everything else. So I, I can't see why they're going to take any notice of £480 million. Pounds. We've increased what we pay them on a regular basis and the net result has been that uh, illegal migration has continued apace. So uh, it's clearly not working. And until we start to see a reduction in the numbers, I would, I would basically be reducing those payments, not increasing them. Mm. Uh, and I would be basically starting to empower and make the border taxi service more effective in intercepting people coming over and sending them back. Uh, we've obviously got to improve our processing. There's no doubt about that. I think we also need a steward's inquiry on the amount of legal migration that, that is happening, uh, uh, as, as one of our, your, your previous um, uh, interviewees said. There seems to be this view that more Im immigration is a good thing because it increases GDP. But that's not the case. And I think anyone who tries to do business in the UK now knows that we are becoming an overcrowded nation uh, and we need to start looking at uh, how we deal with the, the, the situation domestically rather than encouraging further immigration. Well, I think I've got an answer for you, Rupert, because uh, you and I have been studying this for a while and you may have seen today um, a fascinating development because what's happened is two um, illegal migrants have been jailed over the course of the last um, couple of days and their crime was entering, attempting to enter the UK illegally. These are the two people taking part in a basically a battle on the beach with uh, the gendarmerie in France, uh, Ahmed Omar Salih Kater and Salih Taib Abdullah, two guys who got into fights that were waving sort of various weapons around, attacking the French before they got on dinghies to come here. When they got here, they were arrested not for the crime of attacking the police, but for attempting to enter the country illegally. They've now been jailed for that crime. So my point would be, well, if you can jail people for trying to enter the country illegally, surely you can jail a lot more people who come here illegally. Totally, Mike. And look at these people. They're all young men. I yeah. think they've admitted it's 87% young men. Um, and do we want people like that coming into our country illegally? I and mean, the answer is no. Exactly. Uh, and I quite understand why people are getting vexed about it. Um, so, no, I, I, I mean, we, we've seen the Australians. They've cracked it. We should be taking a leaf out of their book, listening to them and, and ensuring that we, we stop this, uh, this nonsense. But uh, I always like to say, watch what the hands are doing, not what the mouth is saying. Mm. And there's absolutely no correlation between what our politicians are saying and what they're delivering. Mm. And, and understandably the British people are getting pretty pretty vexed about it. No, of course. But, you know, we're told all the time by the powers that be in the kind of human rights lobby uh, that, you know, of course it's legal for them to land here. As soon as they claim asylum, they're allowed to claim asylum and have every right to be here. Well, not according to the courts in this country. 
who have threatened, who have sentenced these two characters to time in jail for trying to enter the country illegally. I'll say it again because I, I, I think it bears repeating. You know, if, they, if, if it's a crime to enter the country illegally, it's a crime to enter the country illegally. End of conversation, isn't it? Well, I think, Mike, the whole thing is symptomatic of the ineffectiveness of the civil service and, and the ineffectiveness of government. I mean, I've got some numbers here which will shock your, 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 your listeners. And I was listening to little Jeremy Hunt talking about the fact he's not going to be reducing tax anytime mm. soon. So uh, it, 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 people need to know that, this, that the public sector, uh, when Boris Johnson took office, they were spending $888 billion, or we were, mm. uh, per annum on the, um, on the public sector. Um, according to the OBR now, we're spending $1.154 trillion which represents £41,214 per household uh, on the public sector. So our problem is we're spending more and their delivery is appalling. Yeah. And it does, it's not just immigration, it goes across the whole, the whole basis of, of the public sector. And it's even worse if you, if you think that 37.3% of, of, of GDP, so I'll tell you that the number is, 300,000 people are paying uh, three in 10 pounds of tax that's collected. Yeah. So what we're doing is the Conservatives have done their best to tax us all into oblivion. Mm. Those 300,000 people, Mike, with the benefit of the cybernetic revolution, they can actually disappear to almost anywhere in the world uh, and not pay tax here. So our problem is not... Uh, people avoiding paying tax. Our problem is the public sector. And until we start to actually cut the size of the public sector, until mm. we start to address the ineffectiveness of the civil service, the ineffectiveness of Westminster, and, and we actually start to talk about the true numbers, we, we're going to continue to, 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 to get into a doom loop. And, you know, why would people stay in this country where they're overtaxed, yeah. not receiving the services they should be receiving, and we're all told that, you know, to be rich is is is, is wrong and, and, and that the rich are, are, are unkind. No, they're not. What the rich are doing is generating the wealth to fund the poor. And as Abraham Lincoln always said, you don't make the poor richer by making the rich poorer. Mm. I, I think you should be taking a leaf out of his book, cutting taxes, cutting waste like HS2. Uh, maybe uh, we freeze, uh, you know, the, the, the benefits uh, for the next couple of years. And we start to slash the size of the state. That would allow us to make tax cuts, and it would allow us, to some extent, even to start repaying our national yeah. debt. Far too big. But this is so a problem. The Tory party currently in situ seems to believe that the answer to all of our prayers about fixing the economy is to make the government bigger. Well, it isn't, is it? Clearly, no, it's, it's definitely not. And you listen to that wretched woman, Angela Rayner, who, who uh, you know, spouts off, hasn't got a clue what she's talking about. I mean, you look at you look at our elected politicians, Mike. I, there's there's very little hope. We need an absolute or GM yeah. state job on the entire Westminster establishment because what's happened is our system has hollowed them all out. So the only people you've got at the top of the tree are completely incompetent. Yeah.